Misty Island Rescue. It was an exciting day on the island of Sodor. Construction was nearly complete on the new Sodor Search and Rescue Center, which would help people in trouble. There would be a new helipad for Harold, and Rocky would gain his own shed. There was so much work to do. All the engine, it would be made of the strongest wood of all. Joby Wood, Sir Toppin had told Thomas and the other engines. The wood will arrive today at Brendam Docks, the most useful engine. At the end of the day, we'll get to pull the Joby logs to the search and rescue center. Thomas went quickly to work. Diesel wanted to show off, so with a biff and a bash, he shunted all the Joby Wood away from the docks. Stop! Thomas puffed with his boiler bubbling. Diesel only went faster and faster. Unfortunately, the heavy flatbeds holding the wood jumped off the track and pulling Diesel towards the edge of a steep cliff. Thomas wasted no time pulling Diesel back to safety with all the rich red wood tumbled into the sea. Sir Tom Hatt was pleased with Thomas. He had made the right decision to pull Diesel back. He didn't wait to be asked or to be told. As a reward, Thomas would visit the mainland and bring back more Joby wood. The next day, Thomas waited to be loaded onto a ship. Salty told him and Percy about Misty Island. It's a mysterious place. Salty asked. Once an engine was lived there, no one can find him again because of the mist. If I was lost on Misty Island, Thomas peeped, I put three times two, and I come to save you, Percy promised. The dock manager informed Thomas that there was no room on the ship. Thomas would have to wait for the next boat. Then Thomas spotted a raft. The ship can pull me on that. Thomas, Percy was worried the raft wasn't safe. Don't worry. Sir Thomas had says, I make the right decisions, assured Thomas. And with that, the ship set out to the mainland with pulling Thomas on the raft. Thomas was far out to sea, and darkness started to fall. He heard a creak and a crash. The chain of the steamboat had snapped. Thomas whistled and reached as a big boat steamed away, but no one could hear him. Hear him. The rock waves carried Thomas into the misty night. The next morning, Thomas found himself on an unfamiliar island. It was quiet and very misty. As Thomas explored, he heard strange sounds. Rusty wheels rattled on old rails, and wild whistles echoed around him. Thomas called out, but no one answered. Then, as Thomas rounded a bend, he made an amazing discovery. Thomas had come from fender to fender with the free of the strangest engines he had ever seen. Cinders and ashes, Pete Thomas. Who are you? The strange engines' names were Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand. They told Thomas that he was on Miss Yow. We're the logging locos, said Dash. We've been watching you since you first rolled onto the island. We played rattling wheels and whistling whistles with you, Bash said, but you didn't want to them playing with us. You can now if you want. Thomas didn't want to play with Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand. Their games were strange. No, thank you. I had to get back to the island of Silver. And with that, Thomas reached backwards down the track. Later, as the mist grew thicker and darkness fell, Thomas wasn't feeling so brave. And he had chuffed and huffed all day, but he hadn't found a way off Misty Island. Thomas knew he had to ask the logging logos for help. The next morning on Sodor, the top and hat learned that Thomas was missing. Everyone wanted to help find Thomas. The engine searched all over Sodor. Harold took to the air. So top and hat and Captain chugged to the sea. Out to sea. Thomas spent the day looking for the logging logos. Tracks crisped and crossed. They went. They climbed into foggy mountains and dove into tangled forests. Then, overlooking a deep valley, Thomas discovered an old logging camp. Footplates and fenders, Thomas explained. I found the logging locos. Bash, Dash, and Fernand were loading wood in an old logging camp. Thomas asked them for help, but they were too busy. We said hello to you yesterday, Dash said. But you didn't want, you want to be with us. I'm sorry, Thomas peeped. I was silly that I could find a way off Misty Island by myself. And Thomas rolled something amazing. 
bumpers and buffers. These are lo logs are Joby logs. That's the wood we need to build a search and rescue center. The logging locals came closer together to listen as Thomas told them about the rescue center. They agreed to help him collect logs. Thomas showed the locals how quickly he could shunt. Flatbed's holding logs. One biff, one bash, and there's never a crash. We can't work this hard, said Dash. We'll run out of oil, said Bash. That's right, added Ferdinand. The logging locals were in diesels, but they used wood and oil for fuel. I'm sure you have enough oil, Thomas reassured them. So Top and Head says I made good decisions. The engines busily hauled and shunted flatbeds. When it came to the rickety old bridge, Thomas stopped. The logging locals like bouncing and the old bridge. Yippee! They cheered as they chucked across the quaking tracks. Thomas didn't like the bridge, so we had to cross it to collect the joby wood. So wobbly wheel by wobbly wheel, he crept slowly across. Everything shook, but nothing broke. Thomas was proud of himself for being so bold and brave. Thomas needed the load to load the heavy logs onto flatbeds. But old Wheezy, the camp giant's log loader, wasn't much help. He liked throwing logs instead of loading them. He jiggled and jobbled and spun. Logs flew here and there. They splashed into the pond and crashed into trees. One even bashed Thomas on the boiler. The logos cackled with laughter. <laughs> Thomas needed a better way to help the joke. Help the joke with. Luckily, he spotted an old machine. That's he hoss, said Dash. He's an old log loading machine. He does. It. He needs too much oil, Bash had. That's why we don't use them. Thomas was right. They pulled, poured the last of the oil into he hoss as the old machine creaked and sputtered into action. Thomas was pleased. Soon, Thomas had three flatbeds full of Joby logs, but he had no idea how to get back to Soto. We could use the tunnel. Thomas explained. He didn't tell me there was a tunnel to Soto. He peeped. That's because it's closed. That Bash added. Because it's dangerous. Bash added. Thomas was too excited to listen. I know all about the tunnels. It won't be dangerous. The engines wheezed and wheezed to the old tunnel. Dash stopped at the engines. We logos don't have enough oil to puff to Sodor, he said. Of course you do, puffed Thomas, as he pushed his flatbed into the tunnel. It's just a whir and a whiff, and we'll be there. They disappeared into the dark and twisty tunnel. Suddenly, there was trouble ahead. The rocks... The tracks were blocked by rocks. Then with the rumble and a crash, more rocks smashed down behind them. We can push the rocks out of the way, Thomas puffed. Bash, Dash, and Fernand bravely pumped their pistons. And with the gasp and the groan, they ran out of oil. They couldn't push anymore. The engines were stuck in the tunnel. And no one knew where they were. Just then, Fernand noticed something. I can feel air on my funnel. He peeped. Dash by the hole in the roof of the tunnel. Puff forward. Thomas and huff your, your hardest. Bash suggested. Someone will see your steam. Thomas excitedly beamed from buffer to buffer and started to puff. Back at Brendam Docks, Percy saw something that made his firebox fizz. Three puffs of steam floated high in the distance. It's Thomas, Percy peeped. He's on Misty Island and he needs help. Percy told Sir Top Hat all the engines about Thomas. Everyone was ready to help. Gor James, Gordon, and Edward, you will sail to Misty Island with me, said Sir Top and Hat. Then Whiff suggested the aband using the abandoned tunnel that led to Misty Island. It would be the fastest rate way to reach Thomas. Won't that be too dark and dangerous? Asked the top hat. Don't worry, Puff Whip. I know all about the tracks. Meanwhile, Thomas and the logging locos were wait waiting in the dark tunnel. Soon they heard a noise coming through. And rocks. It was a clicky clack of wheels on the tracks. Then Thomas recognized Percy's friendly voice. 
Bruce and I have found you, Thomas, Pete, Percy. Watch out, Thomas. With Puff, Percy and I are going to push through the rocks to you, to reach you. With that, Percy and Whiff rocked and rolled backwards. And together they pumped their pistons and crashed into town. Through the rocks. Hooray for Percy, Puff Thomas. Hooray for Whip. Thomas introduced Whip and Percy to the logging locos. With the shove and the shunt, Whip pulled the brave engines out of the tunnel. The logging locos wished and whooshed with wonder when they saw the sunny island of Sodor. Thomas helped the logging locos to the Sodor Steamworks for repairs. He knew that Kevin and Victor would make them good as new. So Tom and I was excited that Thomas was safe. And with all the jubby wood Thomas had found on had found on Misty Island, the rescue center would be finished in no time. Finally, the big day arrived. The search and rescue center and the Misty Island tunnel were officially opened. Today is a very special day made by possible very special engines. Mr. Top had said as he cut a red ribbon with a giant pair of scissors. People cheered, and the engine crew Thomas was surrounded by his old and new friends beamed with pride. The end.